If you're a Texas landowner and you're interested in improving the quality of the genetics on your ranch, you can contact me at DeerAndWildlifeStories.com. As a deer hunter, I want to know all I can about America's favorite big game animal. That's why I became a deer farmer. Without deer farms, we lose our greatest resource for research and whitetail management. With them, we gain more knowledge than ever before. Join me as we discover the truth about whitetails and meet those who work every day to preserve this great species for future generations. My name is Keith Warren, and this is Deer and Wildlife Stories. Hey everybody, welcome to the show in the beautiful Texas Hill Country where today we're at Lone Hollow Whitetails. We're about 15 miles due west of Kerrville, Texas. We're going to show you some big old deer and we're going to tell you about the Texas Deer Summit. It's been about four years to the day since I was here last and uh, I'll tell you this is an unbelievable facility. They've got over a thousand deer in the pens. There's going to be hundreds of deer enthusiasts show up from all over the country today at the Texas Deer Summit. And we'll tell you more about that later on, but right now what's going on. These hundreds of people are taking pen tours and they are showing what they've grown out here at Lone Hollow Whitetails. The reason why, this is showtime. This is the time that uh, when new trucks come to a car dealership, everybody wants to come to the car dealership. Well, these are the new bucks and everybody wants to come to Lone Hollow Whitetails and see what they've grown. These people that are taking farm tours, okay, they're going through, they're actually shopping, they're looking for genetics, they're looking for deer to put on their places. Well, yesterday, we had an opportunity to go one-on-one -on -one with the deer manager, with Grant, and he told me about these deer, and we're gonna show you that video right now. How many different bucks are in this pen, and how old are they? There's 17 bucks here. Um, this is all three-year-old class. Boy, I'll tell you what, you've got some that are real standouts. Yeah. I mean, that one right there, he's flared out, and I mean, so he's three. Yeah, he's a three-year-old. He's a Gladiator 3 son. Well, he looks like Gladiator. I mean, he's got that Gladiator 3 in him. I mean, mm -hmm. you can just tell by looking at it. Okay, out of all these bucks in here, how many of these are the result of AI, artificial insemination? We usually do about 75% of our herd AI, and then we live breed 25% or so. Okay. So, I would say 75% roughly is AI babies. Um, Having the bucks we have on our farm, we can live breed GXL, G3, G2, Gladiator himself. Okay. So we do a lot more live breeding because we have these bucks in our herd. So the cool thing is, is if somebody wants to breed with uh, any of your deer, they can contact you for semen, right? Yes, sir. Uh, we sell semen from our bucks, our brand new breeders, all the way to 10, 12 years ago. Okay. We still sell 727 Junior. Really? Um, Gladiator, 16 years old this year, and um, we sell straws all year. Well, and see, I would think, uh, somebody told me last year that Gladiator was the most prolific breeder in the registry there was. That's right. He has surpassed 2,000 offsprings, and he'll be really close to 2,100 probably by the end of the summer. And so, so and what we have in the deer industry, we have the North American Deer Registry. It's uh, like in the uh, kennel, AKC has, uh, you know, for canines, okay, we have deer registries and we can tell genetically where these deer are out of. And when you start looking at this registry and everybody in the deer industry use it, Gladiator comes right back to Lone Hollow That's every right. single time. And, right. and Gladiator XL and Gladiator 3 and all the, all the other Gladiators that come right back here to Lone Hollow. So in all these deer right here, are you gonna make any of these cover bucks or breeder bucks? Oh, we're definitely gonna breed with at least the couple here. Yep. He'll stay here for sure. Yep. Um, but if somebody wants to buy some of these deer, are they for sale? Yes, sir. We sell 10 to 20 breeders a year okay. out of this herd. Um, that three-year-old class is excellent breeders for other farms where that we can spread these gladiator genetics okay. into herds that maybe don't have enough gladiator and make cross outcrosses. Okay. And the, the thing about it is there, you've got so many deer. How many deer are on the farm right now? We stay at a thousand 
Uh, we go down when we sell mamas in the spring, right. and then once babies hit, we go right back over and a thousand. The, yeah, and so and so with a thousand deer, I mean, you can you can only imagine they can they're only using a handful of them really to do the breeding, but they've got some tremendous genetics out here that in other breeding programs uh, they need these genetics. I mean, that, and that's and there are so many deer herds that have been built off of the lone hollow genetics that uh, I can't even begin to tell you. I mean, and tomorrow at the Texas Deer Summit, we're gonna have hundreds of people out here and they're gonna all be looking at this and basically what they're gonna be doing, they're gonna be shopping. That's right. Okay? They're gonna be shopping. And the cool thing about this is you look at these deer and the other part of the thousand deer that are out here, they're gonna be having buggies go around and they're gonna be showing them, okay, these are the two year olds, these are the three year olds and every one of them is for sale for the right price, right? Everyone's got a price. <laughs> All right, we're gonna sit here and look at them. I'll tell you what, that one right there's gotta be yep. well over 30 inches. Yeah. I mean, he's beautiful. All right, so if somebody wants to get a hold of you uh, online, uh, do you have a website? Yes, sir, it's lonehollowwhitetails.com. Okay. And so all they have to do is get on there and they can contact, they, you can contact Grant or you can contact Jeff. Grant's job out here, tell them what your job is, your specific job. My job is every single day looking at these deer, taking care of them, breeding them. He's the daddy. I mean, he's the daddy. Let me tell you something. Four years ago, it was about four years ago right now, Yeah. I was out here and it was about your first week. First week on the job. Four years ago is my first week. Keith asked me to explain what's going on here and I needed as much help from him as I could offer to him. <laughs> but now let me tell you something. Every single buck that we're looking at right here has been born since I was here. That's right. And that's because of you. You have overseen the breeding program and the animal husbandry, and they are looking good. All right, I want you to show me some more deer. I know you've got three-year-olds in the next pen. Yes, sir. All right, let's go look at them. Yeah, let's go right here. The Deer Farming Channel is brought to you in part by Record Rack Deer and Elk Feeds. All right, so this is another pen of three-year-olds. Yes, sir. If somebody was to buy a deer from you, uh, you guarantee pedigree, right? Absolutely. Uh, everything's registered. We send hair samples off. You're guaranteed it is what we say it is. And see, and see, that's one thing that I think is so good because the deer industry has come in the last 10 years. I mean, this is actually our 11th season of doing deer and wildlife stories. And get this, I mean, they said, oh, that'll, the show will never work. It's like, yeah, we're 11 seasons. We're kind of <laughs> figuring it out. Because people like to see big deer and what causes big deer to happen is the pedigree. Yeah. I mean, you know, we can talk about it takes age, yes, and it takes it takes nutrition, yes, but you know what? If you don't have the paper, if you don't have the genetics, and y'all have got the genetics so deep, I look at it and I'm going, you know, at, at all these deer I'm seeing so far, that one right there, the typical frame, is my favorite yeah. flavor. Okay, let's talk about flavor. I mean, and how you're able to offer a different flavor, if you will, different style for different customers. Well, we've got enough deer that we're able to experiment and try different things. We. For instance, that buck you like right there? Yep. 727 Junior Son. Everyone's familiar with the daughters. Yep. Express, Kid Rock. That's what a son looks like. And look how pretty and clean that is. And that's my style of deer, pretty clean. And so if I want to breed with a deer on here, that, um, that's what I'm gonna wanna breed with right there because I know that that comes from a pretty clean pedigree. But somebody else may like width and cheaters and stickers and all that. Right. And so th they can come out here and they can really pick and choose, okay. At this point, let me ask you this, at, at three years old, you don't really have any deer on the farm that are older than that except for breeders, right? Yes sir, the only deer we would have older than that is a deer from last year that needed to be cut early or injured and we couldn't find a home for it. Just holdovers, but most everything leaves the farm at three. So tell them, okay, what happens to these deer after three? I mean, they, if they leave the farm, where do they go? Well, they go to ranches is mm -hmm. where they go. And they go for breeding purposes in other ranches. These deer are wonderful. You know, there, there's something I tell people about uh, about deer hunting and, 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 and hunting in general. It, trophy hunting, I can't really support trophy hunting because you kill out the best genetics when you trophy hunt, okay? And it's for that reason that deer farming is so sought after by people, landowners, because they've killed out the trophy genetics over and over and over so many generations. They don't have deer like this in the wild. But you got deer like this all the time out here right. because you can control the genetics. And, and I think that's what's so good. So if somebody wants to buy these genetics, and take them out to their place to, to breed. And so that way you get back what you had maybe 50 years or 100 years ago. You have an opportunity to do so. Yes, sir. I mean, I just look at them and think, my gosh, 
they're huge. I mean, and they're healthy too. And so, uh, let me ask you this: as far as uh, health-wise goes, uh, have you had any issues with EHD and uh, uh, any any kind of health issues with these deer? It's a hundred degrees in the shade now. Okay, and I'm looking at the deer, and they look nice and fat, nice and healthy. Have you had many health issues? We've had a really good summer. We've been fortunate. Maybe it's the environment this summer, uh, very little rain, but we've had a very quiet summer. Well, I know that uh, years ago when I first came out here and you were first here, there was a buck named Gladiator XL. Okay, you Gladi remember him? I remember. Oh, how can I forget? <laughs> Well, I want you to I want you to take me to him and I want to see him again, say hi. And folks, I promise you, you are not going to believe the size of this deer. I mean, when he was, well, I guess he was three years old when I was here last time. He was three years old when you were here last time. Yeah. And I think you said the same thing and you're not going to believe him at seven. Okay, well, we're going to show him Gladiator XL coming to you in just a little bit, so stay with us. If you're in Texas and interested in becoming a deer farmer, you can contact me for deer farming franchise opportunities right here in Texas at DeerAndWildlifeStories.com. It's a nice, cool afternoon, isn't it? About what, 92. Uh, <laughs> a little bit of breeze going. That's good. There's Paramount. Where? Right there. Holy smoke! Stop! 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 Whoa! Who in the world is Paramount? That's our new two-year-old. Oh my gosh. Was he born here? Yes, sir. Yeah, he's sired right here from G3. Look at this, you act like it's just no big deal. No, that right there is a deer of a lifetime. That's a big deal. Paramount. Paramount, it's two a big years deal. old. Yes, All right. sir. That is a big deal. And that's right. our, our homegrown genetics. All right, There's, yeah, homegrown Paramount right there. Let's go see Gladiator XL. All right, we were on our way to go see Gladiator XL. I said, stop, stop. I'm glad I took my heart pills this morning. I mean, I'm looking at him going, that deer right there looks very familiar, but he's young. That deer could not be over three years old. Yeah, you probably think that's G3. It looks just like G3. No, sir, that's that's deja vu. Yes, yeah, sir, that's a G Gladiator 3, son. Oh my goodness. And he looks just like Papa. You can't imagine that. I mean, I, I look at him and I'm thinking, Talk about genetics throwing, <laughs> throwing the same thing. You know, we just talked about, uh, you know, picking the flavor that you like, and and I mean, look at that. I mean, he, he, you know, he's throwing offspring, looks just like him. What a beautiful deer. Deja vu. Deja vu. It's real easy. And he's gonna be a breeder buck. He's gonna be our new breeder buck. He's two years old. That's a oh, he's two. That's a two-year-old. Get out of here. That's a two-year-old. He just took him and supersized him. That's awesome. Look at that. All right, let's go see uh, Gladiator XL. That right there blows my mind for a two-year-old. Holy smokes, talk about genetics. Woo! You ever get tired of this? No. I do it every either. single day. I wouldn't either. Hold on, stop, stop, stop. Holy smokes. Who is that? That's Gridiron. Holy cow. Yeah. How old is Gridiron? Gridiron's three years old this year. Oh my gosh. How big is he? Oh. See, you get to see him every day. I mean, it's like you've got to be getting numb to it. I never get tired of that. I know you don't get tired of it either, but I'm going, that is one hell of a deer right there. Were all these bucks born here? Yes, that's a Gladiator too, son. So again, yep. Gladiator. I, I mean, we can't even get to Gladiator <sighs> XL because it's like, stop, stop, stop. That's phenomenal. You ought to be so proud of yourself. All right, let's, what I need to do is put blinders on and take me to go see Gladiator XL. Next stop. Okay, next stop. All right, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna close my eyes. Holy smokes. Wow. This is one of the most rare things you will ever see. First off, a deer that is this big. I mean, take a look at this. A deer that is this big is one in a million. I mean, seven years old, and look how big this animal is. 
and a deer that winds up being this big and this gentle is extremely rare. I mean, look, he loves apples, don't you? You're a big boy. Look how big he is. What a beautiful buck. And how many offspring are in the registry out of this guy, you think? He almost has a thousand. Really? At only seven years old. So there are people that have been breeding with this guy all over the country. I know from Florida, Alabama, all the way up north. I mean, this is unbelievable. Look at this. Look at this. Say hi now. Say hi. This is an unbelievable animal. And, and again, if folks want to come out to Lone Hollow Whitetails, this is a special place. And uh, the people that are going to be at the Texas Deer Summit tomorrow are all going to realize how special it is if they haven't ever been out here. If you want more information about coming out to Lone Hollow Whitetails and experiencing this for yourself, and you want to see some of the biggest deer on earth and get to meet Gladiator XL in person, just come on out and give Grant a call. And I promise you, it's going to blow your mind. The Deer Farming Channel is brought to you in part by New Dart, leading the industry in accuracy. All right, we've shown you enough deer, and now it's time to take you and introduce you to the people with the Texas Deer Summit, and you'll learn what it's all about. And if you'd like to see all of our episodes online, just make sure and check out our website. And also, we've got a brand new vlog. Check it out, too. Uh, Kurt Mai with Mossy Rock Whitetails. We're located in Cross Plains, Texas. Uh, came here for the TDA and Lone Hollow Deer Summit. Been here having a great time. It's great to see everybody, all the friends. And, and uh, we went and looked in the pens. And uh, man, I'll tell you, Lone Hollow's got some uh, really pretty, pretty deer. Um, I'd have to say that Paramount was probably my favorite, but there was probably about 10 others. But really, really impressed with their pens. Anyway, we're looking forward to the day and uh, just talking with everybody. My name's Chad Easley. I'm with KC Whitetails. We're located in Mims, Florida. We came out here to the Lone Hollow Summit. Number one, just to look at the, the amount of just world-class, fantastic deer. These Texas deer really thrive well in our Florida environment. We've really done well with them. And the production from farms such as Lone Hollow is just phenomenal. The beauty, you know, the deer that they got out there are just second to none. They got uh, GXL, gridiron, um, too many beautiful deer to name. And then when you look at them in that kind of magnitude, it really makes a statement. These guys really put on a good show, and I'm glad to be here. Hi, my name's Mike Ford. I own the Rio Rojo Rancho. We're a deer breeder in Texas. We come down to the Lone Hollow event. Uh, these are good people, uh, great friends. They put on a great show. We're here to support the Texas Deer Association. Hi, my name is Patrick Tarleton. I'm the executive director of the Texas Deer Association, and we're at the second uh, Lone Hollow and Texas Deer Association Deer Summit. This is an incredible event that showcases one of the most prolific ranches in the state of Texas. They have breeding operation here, they have game management here, they have exotics here, and they also do a lot to improve the land as far as habitat and wildlife is concerned. One of the, the best things about this event is it's a showcase of what the time and energy and resources it takes to actually build a robust ranch like this. It brings the community together, not only from deer farmers, but also from wildlife lovers to hunters to outdoor enthusiasts, all the way out to kids and families that are coming out here to just enjoy one of the nicest ranches in Texas. Viewer feedback is presented by Protect the Harvest, Protect the Hunt. All right, this one comes to me from a viewer by the name of Gerald Kewen. It says, thanks for making it where we can watch your shows online. I'm stationed overseas and that's the only way I can get to see them. The question is about deer farming. I want to get involved, but I don't even know where to start. Gerald, the place to start is on a deer farm, period. Go call up a deer farmer. There's hundreds of them out here at Lone Hollow today. There's thousands across the country. And no matter where you are, there's going to be a deer farm close to you. And what I would recommend you doing Locate a local deer farm and go to them and make a friend. Learn what deer farming is all about and that's the best place in the world to start. When, when you're a guy like Grant and you're around deer like this every single day, uh, I don't know how you're able to remain calm. And what I mean by that, these deer, when you take a look at them, look how big they are. 
And Grant's responsibility is to make sure that these deer are healthy. And so when you see these big deer and you go from this pen, these deer are big, to this pen, these deer are big. I mean, they're all like Goliath deer. They're huge. You know, Lone Hollow is one of Texas's most elite deer breeders, and it's considered a foundation farm that most top farms are actually built from. You know, they got some great barbecue. I mean, they're doing hundreds of chickens and like, dozens of briskets, and so they're feeding a lot of people, and that's gonna be great too. But there's one thing going on in that building right there that I'm not gonna be, I'm not gonna be going in there for love nor money. They're doing pedicures and manicures. Yeah, this isn't too bad. Not at all. This is pretty nice. 